God bless the choir. Uh, before we go into the word of today, uh, on behalf of everybody too, we want to really thank the committee that put yesterday together. Please join me to celebrate our sister, Sister Ife. I saw Sister Ife this morning. Please let's celebrate Sister Ife. They did amazingly well. It was so, it was demanding. And let's also celebrate our sister, our sister Vicky, Sister Vicky, and our, our, our pastor, Mrs. Pastor Ibitoi. And let's also thank their, their husbands too, because without their husbands, it would have been difficult. So, Brother Mike, if you are watching, I'm not seeing the church. Thank you. Pastor Tunde Bitoye, thank you. Okuleske, thank you. And for everybody too that was part of it, Mommy Akitunde, we thank you. Pastor Akitunde, we thank you. We had a couple's get together yesterday and they put it together. I want to celebrate God. I want to also appreciate everyone that made it there. And those that did not make it there, just prepare for the next edition. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Uh, Brother Koyemi, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Esther, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome to City on a Way. City on a Hill. And I pray the Almighty God will make your life a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid from sight in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, we are going to watch this short clip, this short video clip from the media team. Hold you on the Bible. Watch to the end. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out in the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane. The pastor came right here. Changed my whole view on the Bible. Watch to the end. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out in the Aleutian Islands. Right here. Changed my whole view on the Bible. Watch to the end. I was in Alaska doing a lawsuit. We're way out in the Aleutian Islands, getting ready to leave and go back to Anchorage and then home. And I had a ticket in my pocket to get on an airplane. The pastor came up and he said, listen, I can save you money. I said, how's that? He said, I flew a small airplane up here and I fly a small airplane and I can take you in my little airplane and you can save your ticket. And this did not sound, I said, gee, thank you so very, very much. But I've got this ticket. We'll just make our way on home, me and this other lawyer with me. He said, no, 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 you got to do it. you got to do it. And against every better judgment I had, I said, okay. Well, we went out to the airport, took us by his little plane, and I looked at it. And I thought, well, one good thing, it's shiny. Then he walked around it. We got in. He's on the left front. I'm on the right front. The other lawyer's sitting right behind me. And he started it up, and it started up just fine. Well, we taxied out. I said, should we pray? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. We normally don't. I said, well, this time we're going <laughs> to. And I'm telling you, I prayed five, eight minutes. I prayed a long time. We went and got on the runway. He starts down the runway. The plane lifted off ever so gently, and we start climbing. And it's wonderful. Not a problem in the world. We started climbing, and we flew probably three, four minutes. And something happened that will never leave my mind. The pilot turned to me and he said, we're going in the clouds and I can't fly in clouds. They make me pass out. I said, clouds make you do what? <laughs> now it's been cloudy all day. And we go right up into the clouds and you can't see anything. And he looks at me and his eyes roll back in his head. And he starts mumbling and he passes out, passed out cold. Now I grabbed him and I shook him and I said, come on, you gotta wake up so I can kill you. Now we we're in the clouds flying along with no pilot. And my friend in the back seat said, we're dead, aren't we? I said, there's a very good chance of that, yes. He said, what are we gonna do? I said, I don't know. But there was a radio right there and I handed him the microphone and I said, start asking for help. So he's in the back seat reaching up and he said, hello, hello. We didn't know any proper radio etiquette. All we were saying was hello. And somebody answered back, hello, hello. 
don't you guys know proper radio etiquette? And I said, give me. I said, tell, we don't know nothing. Tell them we're in an airplane with a passed out pilot and we don't know how to fly this plane. The guy said, I'm a freighter flying out of Anchorage on the way to Tokyo. And he said, you're telling me you have nobody who can fly that plane with you? I said, tell them that's correct. Now you gotta understand, I am sweating bullets. He said, the first thing I'm gonna do is start circling so I don't lose you because I'll fly out of range of your radio and you won't have me anymore. And he said, I'm gonna get Anchorage emergency for you. An Anchorage emergency will be the people that can maybe help you try to save your life. After about five minutes, Anchorage came on, said, we understand you have a passed out pilot. And those of you do not know how to fly that plane. We said, that's right. They said, well, the first thing we got to do is find you. And I'll never forget what this man at Anchorage said. He said, my job is to get you home safe. He said, that's my job. But he said, here's the deal. If you want me to get you home safe, you got to promise me you'll obey my voice. He said, you can't see me, but I can see you. And he said, if you're not going to obey my voice, you're going to die. When you can't see anything, you have no idea how disorientated you become. Finally, he said, okay, I found you. Now hear me clear. He said, you're four minutes from a mountain. He said, you're going to crash in that mountain and die. Follow my voice. I never said, I have to follow your voice. Is that reasonable? You see, I understood without his voice, I had nothing. And do you understand? Without God's voice, you have nothing. Nothing. Finally, he got us turned. And he said, I'm freezing all the traffic in the area. He said, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get you to Anchorage. And there's a lot of weather between you and Anchorage. You're in for a rough ride. And he said, I want you to hear me. I don't want you to look at what's going on outside. I don't want you to pay attention to the storm just my voice he said if you start watching the storm you will die but i'll take you through it now because they cleared all the traffic several pilots those nighttime freighters those 747s started talking to us they said we're praying for you men you're gonna make it but listen to the voice that's the key. They said, trust the voice. Do you realize your head is full of voices and everybody in this world wants to talk to you and everybody wants to be the controlling voice? And God says, I want you to be a living sacrifice. I want you to put yourself on the altar and let my voice be your voice. Finally, we went through the worst of the weather, but there was still more. And then the voice came back and it said, now, I'm going to line you up. He said, I'm going to bring you in right down the runway. And at the foot of the runway are some lights, and they're in the form of a cross. He said, don't you forget this. The cross is the way home. Finally, he's bringing us down. We still can't see anything. And all he kept saying is, stay with me. My sheep, the Bible says, hear my voice, and they follow me. Finally, just a couple hundred feet off the ground, we saw the cross. I landed the plane. In fact, I landed it seven times. Finally, it all came to a stop, and the minute we stopped, the pilot woke up. The voice said, thanks for listening. I watch them crash and burn all the time because they won't follow my voice. They don't understand I'm the one who can see them even when they can't see me. But they get the voices in their head, and they kill themselves. They self-destruct. Thanks for listening to the voice. Then they put us in a motel room at about four in the morning. A knock at my door. I opened the door and a man was standing there. He said, hello, David. I said, you're the voice. You're the one who got me home. He said, I am. Do you understand one day you're going to stand before him and say, you were the voice. You're the voice that brought me home. If you're not on that altar as a living sacrifice, your head's full of voices. And then we wonder why kids crash and burn. We wonder why marriages are shattered. And the Lord's saying, I'm the one who has the voice. All I can remember is that voice saying, stay with me. 
stay with me. Don't listen to what's going on in your head and don't watch the storm. Stay with me. And I'll take you through. Tonight you have a God who has promised to take you through. A living sacrifice, holy. Amen. Hallelujah. Has anybody been blessed by that? Hallelujah. And I pray that the voice of God, we all listen, we find it, we will listen to it, and we will obey it in the name of Jesus. Let's say a short prayer again. Father, we pray, you minister your word in various means. We ask even that that which you have watched today, you will indeed minister your mind, minister your ways, minister your voice to every one of us here this day even those online, in the name of Jesus Christ. And let your name be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. And we read from verse 29, I mean, sorry, Psalm 29. That was our Bible for today. And the psalm spoke eloquently about the voice of God. The psalm says in verse 3, Say, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The Lord is upon many waters. In verse 4. Say, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord also makes to skip the calf. Lebanon and Syria, this keep like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord devised the flame of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The voice of the Lord makes the heat to calf and discovered the forest. And in his temple, thought everyone speak of his glory. I pray that we will find the voice of the Lord. I want to ask a question this morning. How many of us believe God speaks to us? How many of us can say, I have had God speak to me? Or let me just drop that. How many of us as Christians, you don't think God ever spoke to you? You don't have an encounter. You don't have an experience. Okay? Either you have or you don't. At least we believe that God speaks. God does what? God speaks. And that's what we want to just briefly look at this morning. God actually speaks to men. As he has been doing in the days of old, he is still doing it now. And he will do unto eternity. The Bible is full of accounts of God speaking severally to people. And I know from what we have seen here, the only thing that can take us home safely is what? The voice of God. Every Christian must have a relationship to identify how God speaks to him. Because the way God speaks to you might not be the way God speaks to me. God speaks in diverse manners, in diverse ways. But God desires to speak with us. Because when we hear God speak clearly, you know one thing for sure, that is the right path, is the right instruction. It is the way to go. And Christianity is a relationship. And in every relationship, one of the most important elements of a successful relationship is what? Communication. It's what people of God. Communication. So for us as Christians, as believers, to deepen our relationship with God, we must be able to identify his voice when he speaks to us. And one of the other things of communication is that it is a two-way thing, right? You, you, you give and you also receive. And that's exactly how a believer's relationship with God should be. When we speak to God, we should also expect back a response from God. When God speaks to us, he also expects a response from us. But one thing we must establish this morning is that God actually speaks. He has spoken before, he's still speaking now, 
it will forever speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ. We must learn to hear God clearly. That is the winning formula. We must learn to hear God what? Clearly. I know I told us a story sometimes in the past. For many of us who will be here longer. Said there was a particular woman that I had as a sins, a true life story. I had as a sins were sent to her. She was an executive of the company. When she woke up that morning, as she was going to dress up, she had the voice. She had already set up what she was going to take, dress up for that day. But she had the voice clearly that said, no, nope, don't put that one on. Put this one on. It's as beautiful as that. Said, nope, that is not the dress for today. But the one God told her to put on was so ordinary, so casual. So, you, know, you know when a woman loves to dress elegantly every day and then they now tell you, no, 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 you cannot put on that wig. Just, I even mean, your hair is rough. But just say, no, today is no wig. Drop the wig. And she obeyed as she was going down. She lives in an ups, in, in a stair, uh, upstair building. As she was going down the stairs, she met two men walking up the stairs. And they passed her by. And she went to walk. This happened, one thing led to the other. It now was shown that those two men were actually sent to go and assassinate her. But the picture of her that they had was a picture of a well-dressed, executive, elegant, exquisite woman that dress, that they just cannot miss it. But the woman they passed by the staircase was a woman that was too ordinary, too simple, too casual. And that was how she missed that day to die. How? Because God was spoke and she heard God speak clearly. I pray that relationship that each, each one of us need to build and develop with God, that God will make us winners that we I mean, God will make us to become the winner that he actually wants us to be. We develop that intimate relationship in the name of Jesus Christ. So our topic this morning is how does God speak? How does God speak? We have examined one of the very many ways God speaks for almost a month. Through his word, right? Every Christian should know that one of the principal ways by which God speaks is through us, through his word, through the Bible. Let me say the Bible now. Because the Bible says, that it is written that this book was written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It says, men of old spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's why I've said it again and again. The starting point of your relationship with God is a relationship with your Bible. That is what you have in your hand. Every day, you need to be familiar with your Bible. So, one of the first ways that God speaks to us is through the Bible. It's through the Bible. But if we as Christians, as believers, if we are too separated from the Bible, then we don't even know where God is speaking. Like we said some, about two weeks ago, we said for every situation of life, there's always a word of God that is corresponding to deal with that situation. Every situation of life. But we may not be able to engage that word when we don't even know the word. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible says the voice of God is powerful as we saw in the book of Psalm. The Bible says the voice of God can thunder with a voice, can thunder. Say the, by the word of God can be like the voice of many waters. Revelation chapter 14 verse 2. It said the voice of God can be like thunders and lightnings. The voice of God can be like the sound of many waters. That is why when we are growing up, when they want to dramatize God, they will say, you they will say, oh, my son. Yes, God can speak like that. He used to speak like that. In the book of Exodus chapter 19, on the mountain when God was going to speak with all this, 
The Bible said there was thunders and there was lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mountain. And the voice of God was like the voice of a trumpet. And like we said in chapter 14, verse 2 of Revelation, the Bible said the voice of God was like many waters. Psalm chapter 29 said the voice of God is full of majesty. The voice of God is full of power. The voice of God is so powerful that it breaks the cedars of Lebanon. But nevertheless, God still speaks in diverse manners. God speaks in many ways. And you and I must be able to identify how God speaks. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Has told us clearly that the, every word that is in this Bible is by the inspiration of God. Now look at the next thing. It say it is profitable. It has a lot of profit. You cannot be of familiar grounds with this word of God and be a loser. It is profitable for correction, for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. God speaks. So we must be men and women who are reading, studying the word of God. And that is, to me, that's the basic way that God, you will first of all learn how God speaks to you. Because when the situation comes and you have your bank full with the word of God, the spirit of God will just say, this is the word for it. And then the devil will go. So we need to read it. We need to memorize it. We need to meditate on the word. I'm not going to do it too much on it because we spend almost a month talking about the word of God. Number two, how does God speak to us? By his Holy Spirit. And I know I did mention again about a week or two ago that the basic thing a Christian must be filled up with is the Spirit of God. Every spirit, the foundation, must be the foundation of the Holy Spirit. All of these, they work together. Is the Holy Spirit is the executive power of God. Is the one that gets the things of God done, that executes it. So when you need the word of God, the Holy Ghost goes into your recesses, it goes to your spirit, man, to your soul, and it's looking for the right word for that situation. But when you are empty, and I am empty, and there's nothing in it, it goes there, it finds nothing, it returns back empty. And then the situation prevails. God also speaks through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in you at the point of salvation. The Holy Spirit dwells in you at the point of redemption. That is why if you have not given your life to Jesus, then you have not even started the journey at all. Because when you confess him as your Lord and your Savior, then you are inviting the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. And then the Holy Ghost, when you are reading, like I told you the last time, is the author of this book. So anytime you read, you memorize, you meditate, it's able to give you meanings deeper than the surface meaning. That is why when somebody studies the Bible for as an history test, it's different for the person that studies the Bible from the spiritual sense. So you can find a Muslim that will say, I've read the Bible from, Gen from Genesis to Revelation. It will not mean the same thing to him as it's going to mean the same thing to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we meditate on the word of God, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us interpretation. It's the one that gives us guidance and shed light unto us. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Or let me quickly look at uh, 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 Psalms chapter, chapter 19. Psalms chapter 19. From verse 7. It says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The status of the Lord are right, rejoicing the earth. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the, the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. Go to verse 14. It says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight, O oh Lord. 
Psalm 90 verse 14. The word of God is something we need to meditate on. It must be in our mouth. We must be able to speak it. That the Holy Spirit will give it interpretation. The Holy Spirit will give it clarity. The Holy Spirit will shed light. It will expand it. It will adapt it to fit our situation. So the same word will, will work in different ways for different situations. But the same word, the same word, it will work in different ways for different situation. How does God speak to us? God speaks to us through prayer. He speaks to us through the Bible. He speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through prayer. And I know that's also a very common ground for a person like me. Because a lot of times in the place of prayer, just get an inspiration. Now remember, that the voice of God thunders like many waters, but it's not every time the voice of God comes like many waters. In the book of 1 Kings, I think chapter 19, the Bible says Elijah was on the mountain. He had to hear the voice of God. He said there was a fire. The God was not in it. There was an earthquake. God was not in it. Until he what? A still, small voice. A still, small voice. Voice. So in the place of prayer, God speak to us. Prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. When we speak to God, we should expect God to speak back. When we ask God for something, we should expect a feedback and a response from God. When we pray, we should expect God to either tell us a yes or tell us a no or tell us to wait. The, be the most beautiful thing in the world is to be a child of God. But I can tell and I can boast, many of us, we are not even taking an advantage of that relationship we have with God. Not even one of a hundred. That is why a lot of times we are kind of dominated. We are struggling. We are in trouble. Because we have the ultimate provider. We have the ultimate power. We have the ultimate creator. We have the ultimate father. He controls everything. When you get home, please go to Job chapter 30, 31 or thereabout and see how God made all things. You will be amazed. You will, you will shiver in awesomeness at the power of God. But we don't take advantage of this God that we have. We don't take advantage of our relationship with him. And he wants us to be, he wants us to be winners. He wants us to be conquerors. He wants us to always be successful. But how can we succeed if we are going on a journey and we, don't, we are just going on a guesswork? We don't even know where to turn. But it says that if you walk in this way, you will hear a voice behind you saying, turn to the right, or what? Turn to the left. There will always be a voice to give direction. We must learn how God speaks to us. And we must desire, as people of God, to know to hear the voice of God. The more time we spend in the place of prayer, the more we get accustomed to the word of God. I can testify. I can testify. After a prayer, just hear a word just drop to your spirit. Sometimes it may be a scripture, direct scripture. Sometimes it may be a ministration. It may be an instruction. And every time I have had to do that in the place of prayer, it has never been a regret. And I know many of you can testify to that. I know many of us can testify to that. God speaks through his word. God speaks by the Holy Spirit. God speaks through prayers. God speaks through what? Through prayers. He answered Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11 through a still small voice. A still small voice. I remember in the Old Testament, that was when the voice of God would turn down like many waters. There they had the angels. In the New Testament, now we have the Holy Spirit. And we have the still small voice of God. Because the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. How does God speak again? God speaks to us through others. God speaks to us through others. Prophets, preaching, 
or they sound like this. On the television, on the radios, literature, God speaks to us through other people. God speaks to us through other means. He once spoke through a donkey. Remember the story? He once spoke through a what? A donkey. That is why he is God. Omnipresent, omniscient, omni. What's the third one? Did I pronounce it well, Sister Esther? Omniscient, right? Omniscient. The last time I said, she came to do I said, Pastor, it's not called omniscient. It's called omniscient. Is it correct now? <laughs> omniscient. Just forgive me. I went to school in uh, one local village. It won't, it, won't, it won't good country like that. You know, praise the name of the Lord. It's omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Science. It is must say science now. We are correcting science here. You say science. It's, it's mathematics. Praise the name of the Lord. It's God. When he chose, he spoke through a fire. When he chose, he spoke to a man through a donkey. When he chose, he spoke through a cock. Because Jesus told Peter, the cock will not, before the cock crows three times, you are going to what? Betray me. And did the cock crow? The cock crow. When, uh, 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 what's his name? The, the, the prophet was going to, what's the name of the two prophets again now? Mm, I forgot the name of that prophet. When he was going, and the, the donkey will not go far because there was an angel standing before him. Balaam and Balak, thank you. Balaam the prophet, Balak the king. And the angel of God stood before, before him. And the donkey will not go anywhere. And the man was beating the donkey. How dare you? You want to fall me down. How dare you not walk in my way? And what did the donkey say? He said, ah, you this wicked master. I've been carrying you for many years. Is there ever been a day I tried to throw you off in Numbers? I think Numbers chapter 21 or there about. I've never thrown you off. So this one day that this is happening, should you not think clear, clearly? God can speak through the wind. It will speak through fire. It will speak through donkeys. That is why it's important that we should know how God speaks and then you identify how God speaks to you and to me. Because from that short clip, what will take us home? The voice of God. What will take us home? The voice of God. Home, I mean, and home is to take us home safely. To take us home safely means for us to be successful in all we do here on earth and even in heaven. In this world and the world to come. To take us home so safely is to be successful. And the only thing that can guarantee our success and give us success is knowing the mind of God at any particular time. Hearing his instruction clearly. That's why I told Joshua, in chapter 1 of Joshua, he said, this book of law shall not depart from where? From your mouth. Because when you know it, you can't get it wrong. Even when you get it wrong. I have a pastor. I have a pastor back home in Nigeria. The woman, she told us a testimony one day. Her husband is such a husband. Also, also, also pastor. But you know those in, when we were second this school, we called this for the cocoa. People that they will do things thoroughly, thoroughly plus thoroughly times thoroughly. They don't bend. If they read the Bible and the Bible says go, what are they going to do? They are going. There's nothing you can do to stop them from going. No compromise, no bending, nothing. If that my pastor call a meeting for 10 and you are 10 01 as far as it's concerned, you are late to the meeting of God. And there was no punishment for you coming late to God's meeting. It's as bad. or It's not bad. It's as good. It's as serious as that. And what is part of his life at work, I mean at church, is the same thing at home. So the wife was like, ah, ah. Then she was like, God, how did I marry this man? How? And I, I'm still a good man. When me and my wife are going out and she's over she's overdressing and I'm angry. I, I've never dropped her one day. Have I ever dropped you? <laughs> Have I ever drove her and left you behind? I don't think so. But this is my pastor. If he said we are leaving home, 
10. And it's 10. And you are not ready, madam. He is going to, even if they are flying out of the country, 10 is 10. He is going to leave for that 10. He will leave everybody behind. So everybody, all of us in the church, those of us in his department, those of us that were working with him, we were always working to order. That's something you want to do. It's just his nature. It can't change. So the woman told us one that at the point she was so tired of the ma. And yeah, okay, she was even, okay, yeah, thank you. She knows, she knows. So you can imagine even in her pregnancy, the man still remained rigid and tight. Even when, it was, when she was pregnant. And the woman like, this pregnancy is your baby. What is strong with this? You are still supposed to follow rules and regulations to the last. So she got so upset one day and she cried and cried. And then she started praying and asking God, how did you bring me into this man's life? And he said he had a voice and God said, well, if you ask me who we are going to marry and I told you that's your husband. So what do you want to do about it now? That that was the voice she used that, and she remembered that actually before she married, she had prayed and God told her clearly that this man, God mentioned his name, that this man is your husband. So God now reminded him, maybe you ask me and I told you that's your husband. So if that is your husband, this is the place you should be as at this time. You are not going anywhere. Live through it. Walk through it. See, so that was the point she started to get better in her mind. Now she started understanding the man. She now took her time down and broke herself down and broke the man down. I started understanding the man, understanding the man, and their marriage as a dead was about 30 something years old. But by the time we met them, they were already bonded together, right? All the trouble were gone. But at the beginning of the marriage, it was torn. But because she knew, and God reminded her, I told you, you asked me, and I told you that's your husband. So you are not going anywhere. Anywhere else you go is what? It's trouble. Any other man is what? It's trouble. That is your husband in this world. Maybe in another world, you get another one. But for this world, this is your husband. So, they, so what am I saying? The voice of God for us is to get us home safe. It does not mean there will be no storm. It does not mean there will be no moments of doubt. When you are going to be asking yourself, God, are you in this situation? But when you have heard, like you are in a career now, you know you heard that God said, this is your job. I sent you here. That I told people, I said, I came to redeem because I knew what God told me. I knew what God told me when I came to redeem. That's why there's nothing, I'm not going anywhere as far as redeem is concerned. Unless God speaks again. Because there was a point in my life, I was confused, I was lost, I was uncertain. And I was a very then and a very avid reader. And I was also very spiritual. I wanted to know everything about every religion. I read the Quran. I read, um, for those of us that know this man, they call Hare Krishna. I read the great message. I read uh, what, the Rosicrucia. I, I read a lot of literature, and I don't, was not just reading, I was going deep into them. At the point in my life, I was, uh, what do you call this, the necro, what is not necromancy, when you begin to float when you are sleeping, and you see yourself flying and floating. I mean, like German already. <laughs> <laughs> astra, extra, astra projection, thank you. Because I was really, really deep in those literature, and I wanted to practice them. But the day came in my life, you know, I was so confused. And then one day, I just stood somewhere and I said, okay, God, one thing I've discovered in everything I've learned is that every one of this literature and religion, they agree that there's a superpower somewhere. There's a God somewhere, eternal being somewhere. All of them, regardless. But now, everybody's expressing it in different ways. And I asked God. I said, God. And I also discovered that every one of this religion agrees there's life after death, that dying is not the end of existence. That when, you, when we die, there is still another existence that continues. And almost all of them also agree that there is heaven and there is hell. Except the way they describe it is different. A particular one says there are 15 heavens, 15 levels of existence, not heavens, that when you die in this world 
and you are not pure enough to go to the presence of God. So they agree there is God, right? You go to another world where you will live a higher life and you will be purged until you, if you get better in that world, you go to the next. Somebody, some people believe that when you die and you are such a wicked person, you go to a lower level of existence. You become an animal. So it is true in those days that when they say some people died and they turned to become lake, stone, mountain, animals, their level of wickedness. So when, when, when people die, they go to a lower level of what? Existence. When you die average, you go to one level. But when you die very, very clean and pure, you go to, that's a, that is the only way you can get to where God is. Anyway, long story short, I be, everyone have common a denominator and agreement. So one day I stood, I was outside and I looked to heaven. I said, God, I'm not going to pray through anything or anybody today. One thing I've discovered is that you are God and you are alive. And again, I know you love me. Now, tell me yourself of all these religions that have come in contact with. You tell me your own religion. You tell me your own, the one that you have approved of. Tell me the way to you of all, because all of them claim that the way to eternal life, right? Say, so tell me which is your way to you. So the day I had an encounter with Jesus and I became born again, the voice said to me, this is my way to you. I had it clearly. But I was not churchy. I was not going to church. But I'm going to end up in the deep. And I went in and said, okay, you have done part one. Let's do part two. Show me the church. Because I live in an environment that was full of churches, right? Which of your church do you want me to go? I'm not saying just which is your church that is suited for me. Because some of us are ready, we should really be in a winners. Some of us should be in a, a four square, four square of fire. Some of them are there and they should really be redeemed, right? Say, tell me which is the church you have chosen that is suited for me. I said, when I got to redeem, by one way or the other, it didn't happen immediately. It took months, it took years. It does, it does have to happen immediately. When I got to redeem and I had that peace, I had that, I connected almost immediately. Then one day again, the voice said to me, now I've taken you to where you want me to take you to. So, like, there's nothing today anybody can prove or preach that will make me deny that there's no God. One, there's nothing anybody can tell me that will make me to doubt if Jesus is the way to God. There's nothing. I had myself. Now I'm 100%, 1 million percent convinced that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and I don't need, let heaven and earth fall. Let, let, let anybody come and do miracles that is more than miracles. I don't care. I have a personal, I have my own word. He led me there. It's not the guesswork. So it does not matter. Let it, look, if you like, wake up 15 dead body. Body has been dead for 2,000 years. Wake them up. I will still not follow you except you wake it up in the name of Jesus. I have my counter. God told me, this is my way. It's my son, Jesus. This is the way to me, Jesus Christ. That's how knowing the word of God, the voice of God, helps us to arrive home safely. You are not going to be in doubt, even when storms come. As a Christian, have I had storms? Yes. Did today do I have storms? Yes. But does that change my faith in Jesus? No, because I know how I got to Jesus. As a pastor, a redeemed, do I have storms? Yes. Do I have challenges? Yes. But will I live tomorrow? No, because I know how I got to where. The same thing with career, the same thing with marriage, the same thing with business, the same thing with every area of life. When you have had God speak to you, like that, my pastor's wife, when the storms come, the words will remind you, don't worry, you are in the right place. I'm in this with you. After all, Jesus was in the boat, and yet, yet there was this storm. And that was what the man said in that short clip. Don't look at the storm. Once you can recognize the voice, the storm don't make a difference. You just obey the voice. But the voice you will obey is the voice that you will recognize. Because the man said, there are many voices, and every of those voices are looking for control. The devil also speaks. Your flesh speaks. 
family members speak. For those of us who are married, your wife speak. Sometimes God is speaking, your wife is speaking. Right, church? God was speaking to Abraham. Sarah was also what? Speaking. What did Sarah, what did Abraham do? He followed the voice of God spoke to Adam. Eve also did what? Spoke. Who did Adam follow? He heard the voice of his wife. Our wives, God will help us to help us. God will help you to help us. It shows how powerful women can be. How powerful their voices can be. Many of us today as men, we are making wrong decisions because when God is speaking to us, it may not be, and that's the thing about the voice of God and the way God is speaking to us. It may not necessarily sound pleasant. Right? It may not sound good. But when the wife speaks, I told her an experience one day when we were praying and the Holy Spirit told me, sell your car, give the money to the church. My first worry was my wife. What if she says no? What am I going to do? Because it can cause trouble, right? Thank you, mommy. I like the way you shake your head. They can tell you, God needs to speak to me too. Uh, that God that spoke to you is <laughs> not the God of Abraham. It's the God of uh, they will twist and they made their life miserable for you. What are you going to do? Okay, okay, it's true. God did not really speak to me. Oh. I think I was just, <laughs> I was just, I'm just imagining it. And then you just listen to that voice and leave the voice of God. She said, I'm not blaming her. I'm not saying, you know, but thank God when I told her, see what God told me to do. She did not argue. Even though we're going to go from having a car to climbing Okada. But she did not argue. Even though uh, I used Oboju of Abraham. You know, when Abraham was taking Isaac for the slaughter, did he tell the wife? Ah, you can't tell them everything, no. <laughs> See her? Yeah. He did tell the wife. Because if I told the wife, there's nothing on earth that will allow. Say, how? My only son. To where? How? How will the woman have allowed the man to take his only son that he gave birth to at age of 90 to go for? How? Which woman? Never. Woman that go to Jesus and said, Jesus, in your kingdom, he went with two children. Jesus, in your kingdom, in your kingdom, promise me that this one will sit on this side and this one on this side. Where will she sit? Where is she supposed to sit? That's how women has. So Abraham knew that I cannot tell the wife that this is what God told me to do, to sacrifice our only son. Meanwhile, Abraham has an alternative in Ishmael. Sarah has no alternative. But Abraham knew what he had. He knew he had God clearly. And he knew that the way to get home safely, to be successful, is to follow the voice of God. Is to obey the voice of God. Abraham just went, the Bible says, early in the morning, before the wife woke up, Abraham carried everything. Boom. The wife woke up and was calling on GSM, no GSM. Was communicating to the party. Abraham, where are you? The man did not pick up the call. The call rang. No, no way. Leave this matter. We come back. And see how Abraham broke through. Abraham broke through. So, as children of God, God also speaks through others. God can speak through an ass. He can speak through a donkey. He can speak through a friend. He can speak through a parent. He can speak through a child. Thank you, mommy. He can speak through even a, a stranger. But when God speaks through others, what must you do? You must confirm that it aligns with the word of God. Because there are always many voices. And every voice wants to find a control. Let's, let's stop there today. My time is gone. Finally, okay, let's be details. So God can also speak through circumstances. God can speak through what? Circumstances. So when things happen around you, you don't want to blame God. You want to ask God, what are you telling me in this situation? Particularly when unpleasant things happen. You're not saying, God, why me? You've got to be somebody. And this situation is your turn. It's my turn. So what's going to be the question? God, what are you telling me in this situation? And the Lord will take us to that place of communion and communication with him effectively in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to bow our heads quickly. And what I want you to take home this morning is if you are here, you are not be hearing God's voice or you are not sure, just talk to him. 
talk to him. Make it a desire. As you are going home today, say, Father, I really want to have that encounter. I want to come back before your people and speak to them and say to them, you spoke to me. Not a guesswork. I want to really be sure. Take me to that place of communication with you, O oh Lord. Say, Father, whatever is between me and you does not allow me to hear you clearly today. Whatever is an element of doubt, whatever is an element of unbelief that is in me, or unrighteousness, or uncleanliness, or filthiness, that will not allow me to hear you when you're speaking. Because you're speaking always, say, Father, please deliver me from them. Father, purge my life of every such in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says it gives us ears to hear. Say, Father, you have given me this ear to hear. Not only to hear the voices of men, but to hear your voice. Say, Father, make my ear hearing ears. Make my ears hearing ears. Ears that hear you when you speak. Ears that hear you when you speak. And say, Father, give me an obedient, obedient heart. Enable me to obey you, obey your voice when you speak. Let me identify your voice among the multitude voices, multitude voices that surround me. Let me, O oh God, know clearly when it is you that is speaking. And let my ears hear you. Let my life obey you. Help me to follow you through. Because we, that man said, we self-destruct when we don't follow through with God. We self-destruct when we don't know what God is saying in any situation. In every situation, Father, let me know what you are saying. In every situation of my life, going from today, let me know exactly what you are saying, what you are telling me, telling me to do, and help me to do, oh God, help me to obey your voice in the name of Jesus Christ. There's no shortcut to recognize God's voice. We have to grow in it. As a baby grows from being a child, and it grows to taking baby steps, it grows from taking milk, it grows to eating, soft, it grows to taking, taking bone. There's no shortcut. You have to be consistent. You have to do it from time to time. From infancy, you go to maturity. So wherever level you are today, God is ready to walk with you. Talk to him and invite him to you. Say, Father, come into my life. Give me that relationship. I want that encounter. I want to be continuous. I want it to be continuous, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Talk to God. Talk to him. Father, we exalt you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we ask of you as a church today. And for every one of us here present and those who are online with us and those that will watch this even in times to come, that indeed from today, for as many are here that have never had this encounter to know your voice, today, give them a new experience. Father, today, this week, give them their new experience. Give them their encounter. Every ability to recognize your voice among the many voices that surround us. Father, release upon us 